so a big cost of electric paramotors is in the battery um, and it's also a big part of the weight especially if you're using lithium polymer batteries uh, what I have instead are lithium ion batteries and these guys per pound are significantly lighter for the same capacity. The catch, of course, is that their uh, discharge isn't nearly as high, so you need a lot more of them. Basically, in the end, you end up with a higher capacity, longer lasting battery for the same weight. Uh, these are 21700s or 2170s, depending on who you ask. Uh, as of now, this is what Tesla uses in their cars, though they're about to phase them out for a larger cell. Uh, the battery I'm building is a 12S6P, and that will be a 50 volt, 1.1 kilowatt, uh, something like 25 amp hour. Um, should fly for somewhere in the 20 minute range, but you could parallel multiple batteries. So all these together weigh 10 to 20, 15 to 20 pounds. Um, so you could strap two more on your hips, for example boost your flight time up to an hour and still be lighter than a gas unit um, and still be cheaper. But to build these first, I need to be able to build batteries. And to do that, I needed all of this. Um, this is actually a spot welder by a company called Keen, Keenlet, if I'm saying that right. Um, they're German, but they make this spot welder kit that's actually pretty pretty spot on. So down here you've got your uh, battery connections. You actually hook this up to a car battery, which I have on the floor over there. Um, the electrodes to do the welding. Um, the MOSFETs that actually send power into the weld. And a control board that you can dial in the exact time of your weld so you don't burn up the battery. And then all the associated hardware that goes with it. Um, anyway, so to build the battery, first I need to build this welder. So we're going to get started on that. All right, that montage was exciting. Um, so basically, assembled just a bunch of bolts, uh, and also not seen as the foot pedal that will actually trigger it. So what this does is send the entirety of a car battery into the tips here to heat up a spot of metal to basically melt it to you know, it, itself or the battery or another piece um, and then immediately turn off and this whole microcontroller get up times it and also controls its its uh, intensity and all these little guys are basically just one giant switch um, they're, they don't they're not literally switches but uh, that's what they are they're MOSFETs so power in on this side you dial it in to what you need hit the foot button, power out on this side for very short bursts. We're talking hundredths of a second. But um, anyways, I'm gonna hook it up to the car battery I have just off screen here, and we'll give it a, a couple test jolts before I dial in the power and actually start to work on these batteries. All right, we've got the welder hooked up just over here, just off screen. Um, I've got it on its default setting, which is 10 joules for one half second, and I doubt it will be able to do much of anything. Um, what I've got 
here in my hand is a 0.2 millimeter nickel strip, uh, 8 millimeters wide. This was the thickest stuff that my battery supplier had, and I know it's not going to be thick enough, so don't freak out in the comments. I'm going to be using this and then soldering on top of it uh, probably a length of 10 gauge wire, and then I'll be interconnecting the cells with 10 gauge wire as well. Um, the battery will have to put out at most 240 amps for the motors and speed controllers. And 10 gauge for very short sections like I'm going to be using will be more than enough. Probably use 8 gauge, uh, maybe even 4 coming from the battery up to the speed controllers. But basically we've got a strip of 10 here. We'll take a small section of it. Another piece to make a battery, and we'll see if they stick together. So, uh, welding is pretty easy, just one point here, one point here. I click the foot pedal, and it heats up the metal in between those and clicks them together. That's it. <laughs> Unfortunately, like I said, not really much power to it. See, they pull apart pretty easily, but that's the start. I'm on setting 10. It goes up to 500. So, you start dialing up the power, and uh, I'll just keep doing that until I get a weld that I can't pull apart, and then we'll come back and I'll show you actually assembling the battery. All right, move the battery uh, up here. Thanks, Ashley. Um. I'm at 37 joules though, which I'm no math expert, but I think that was more than I started with. I just wanted to show you what the process actually looks like when they stick. So pushing the electrodes down to combine the metals, hit the foot pedal, and you'll see a, a little bit of a jump right here at the electrodes. You'll see a little spark and a touch of smoke. That beep means it's done. You can see how hot that got right there. Uh, well, maybe you can't. You can see how hot that got right there, and uh, the marks go clean through the nickel, nickel. That's how you know they're put together. I cannot, I cannot pull that apart. So 37 is what I'm going with. Um, now, what I've got to do is build my parallels. So this is a 12 cell battery, but to get to the capacity I need to be able to run these motors without killing the batteries, I am going to use six cells in parallel per package and then 12 of those in series, it's a 12S6P. So we've got six, six 2170s. And these are the nifty little holders here. Put those on. Grab a second one. Those drop on. And these actually interlock. That's kind of a hard thing to see, but now that is one bank. You see where the plastic. Well, they've got little keystones, and they lock together. Two more on the top. These actually aren't really needed at all. Once you weld the batteries together, the tabs will hold them together. But this makes it a lot easier to assemble large packs. So, there you go. That's one unit. Twelve of those. I also realize I don't have enough of these. I thought they would uh, sit right in the middle. They don't, they sit on the ends. So we'll have to order some more. In the meantime. Got that 
piece to go all the way across. I'm gonna save that one for a template. And this one. Also gonna save that as a template. I'm going to do four welds, kind of in a crisscross pattern on each terminal. Here comes the first. Second. So that's one. Make sure it won't come off. Yeah, I'm, I'm ripping the metal apart as I pull. That is... I can't pull any harder than that. Uh, because I know I'm going to be going through several layers, I'm going to up the joules to 40. With these terminals elevated off the cell, I'm not going to damage anything like that. It'll just melt through a little more complete. And um, all of these are positive. Since this bank is going to be in parallel, you get all positives on one side together. These are uh, 4,200 milliamps a piece, so 4.2 times 6, 25.2 amps, or amp hours, uh, capacity per cell. And then those in series will give me the 50-ish 12S volts that I need to run this thing. It's actually getting kind of warm. There's quite a bit of power flowing through that. Now the controller up there is not, but there you go. That's uh, part of a finished pack, at least. Still have to do the bottoms. I'm sure everyone's riveted by battery welding, but I'm going to stop that there and just keep trucking on. When I've got something else to show you, I'll come right back. Okay, a uh, good hour or two later, and pretty much done for this video. Um, this is half the battery, basically. So one, two, three, four, five, six cell. I'm making a 12 cell, so halfway there. Um, basically, from cell one, positive side, will go out to the speed controllers, and negative side to the positive of cell two. Cell two, negative side, positive side of cell three. Cell three, negative positive of cell four, negative, positive, negative, positive, et cetera, et cetera. The negative will jump down to seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, and then at the end of 12, of course, it'll come back up. Now, the other thing is um, not pictured here. It's a balance connector, basically a plug that has a wire for every single one of these cells so that the charger I've got can balance them, make sure each cell has the same power. So each bank, you know, six of these cells, they will all have the same energy, but that doesn't necessarily mean that cell four and cell five will match, and they need to, because if you're flying or draining whatever, and you're draining the battery past nominal voltage down in the threes range, 
you know, you could damage cell four if cell four had, you know, two, say two tenths of a volt lower than cell five. Now cell four is actually 2.8, cell five hits three and cell four is damaged and that's it, it's toast. So um, balancing is important. I've got a giant balance plug, but I'm just gonna solder that on when I've got all of them set up. Uh, I weighed it though. So this is five pounds, nine ounces. It's 2.5 kilograms. So reasonably speaking, the full size battery will be now uh, somewhere in the 11 to 12 pound range, which is like six kilograms, which is spot on. Um, I'm trying to compete with a 1700 milliamp lipo battery that weighs about the same. So more capacity, sorry, 17,000. This is 25,000, so more capacity, longer flight time. Anyways, we'll stop there. I've got a whole nother bank just like this to build. First, I have to order more connectors, uh, spacers for the cells. I get that in, I'll put them together, and then I'll show the final assembly of the battery in another video. Thanks for checking it out.